Hey guys, what's up? Alex Scott here with ConcertDD.com. Thanks so much for checking out another one of our studio gear reviews. Today we are taking a look at a very cool and interesting microphone. This is the Octava MK319 Large Diaphragm Condenser. Now, a lot of you guys may know Octava as that weird post-Soviet mic company, or actually Soviet mic company, um, that made a bunch of very interesting looking and kind of funky um, knock offs and all kinds of stuff of a lot of Western style gear. And that is accurate. Um, but a lot of guys, you know, they think of Soviet as, or a lot of people think of Soviet manufacturing as kind of, it's how we think of um, manufacturers in Asia now, maybe not the best quality, really inexpensive sometimes to a fault. Um, and I'm not even necessarily disputing all of those things either. Um, but one thing that I do know is that I really like Octava mics. I think that they're interesting. I think they're quirky. I think they're fun. And I think that they sound unlike anything else on the market. And this mic in particular, the MK319, is my personal favorite. I actually own three of these, um, and I use them all the time. They live on my toms and my kick drum. Um, and I think that they sound great for those, those particular applications. They sound great on a lot of stuff. Um, I will actually use them on voiceover. Um, I've used them on piano before. Um, I have used them on acoustic guitar before. Uh, they, they just have a really interesting tone and timbre to them. Now, the sound that they get, I would not necessarily describe as ultra detailed. Um, I would not describe it necessarily as ultra clean. Um, but what I will say is that it has this wonderful kind of chewy, dark very vintage uh, character. And it's something that I just really, really, really like. Now, a lot of people are probably gonna disagree with me in this video and they're gonna get on the comments and they're gonna say, uh, this microphone is crap, do not buy one. And I totally respect that opinion. It is not a mic for everybody. But if you guys have seen all my other gear reviews here at Concertini, you guys will know that I love weird, interesting, quirky gear that's going to give you a really interesting sound. And I am a firm believer that if you know how to use your tools and you know when to use the tools that you have, uh, you can achieve really cool results pretty much no matter what you're using. Once you hit a pretty, you know, a certain standard of quality, which these mics totally uh, pass, you know, it is all about what tool you choose and when and how you choose to use it. And so these, you know, would I use it, would I use a 319 on a critical vocal for a big pop record? No, probably not, because on vocals it has a tendency to sound sometimes a little bit cloudy. The top end response isn't fabulous. Um, but stick it up on a drum kit. You know, again, I use them on toms and kick. I love them. They've got great, real velvety, big, punchy low end. Um, or just anything where I want it to have a lot of character. So if I'm doing a piano part, maybe for a some kind of soundtrack or score for uh, for something, and I want the piano to just sound real vibey and, and real old school, this is a perfect mic to reach for. Same thing with acoustic guitar. If I want it to be really round and warm and kind of have a dark vintage characteristic, great mic uh, to reach for. I, I do like it on voiceover because it has a great way of taming sibilance. Um, if you've got a very sibilant S E kind of vocalist and you're trying to do voiceover and have things be really clear and not compress a ton and all that kind of stuff to keep really natural sounding voiceover, it's a great mic for that because of the, you know, there's a little bit of kind of dimming, you could say, in the top end. Um, so it does a great job of controlling sibilance naturally. Um, the other thing I love about these mics is the price. You can find them used really reliably for right around a hundred bucks. And to me, you know, anybody out there who's looking at spending a hundred dollars on a studio microphone, you kind of have, you're pretty limited in your options. There's a ton of mics out there that are a hundred bucks, but what you find out pretty quickly is that whether you go with CAD or MXL or Pile or any of these companies that are selling mics at that price point, they're actually all manufactured in just a couple of different uh, factories overseas, typically in China. Um, and even though they might be coming from different brands, you know, one mic might say MML, MXL, one mic that might say Nady or some other manufacturer, they're actually the, an identical mic. They may have just been painted a different color. One may have a gold grill, whereas the other has a silver grill, something like that. Um, so you, you're being fooled into thinking you have more options than you actually do. With this guy at a hundred bucks, you're getting something uh, that is very much unique. It's very much different from those um, kind of hundred dollar guitar center type uh, studio condensers. Those mics have a tendency to be very, very bright, very sibilant, very um, overly, you know, they can be really, really harsh if you're not careful. 
This mic is totally the opposite. It's got a lot of chewy vintage uh, character, kind of smoky vibe to it. And so, you know, just again, as a different flavor, as, as a tool to be able to reach for when I want that kind of a sound to give something a lot of old school kind of grit and funk to it, um, I think it's just a really, really cool option. And I would reach for this over one of those kind of bargain basement uh, Chinese condensers any day, the, any day of the week. So let's go ahead and take this mic and our camera out to my tracking room and check it out on a few different sources. Okay, guys, there you go. There is the Octava MK319. Definitely not a mic for everybody. Uh, definitely has its own sound and its own vibe to it. But, you know, again, if I were sitting down and I had $100 to spend on a mic, which is pretty common for me. You guys know I'm very budget conscious when it comes to my gear. But because of the amount of work that I get and everything that I have to do, I, I need a lot of gear. Uh, but if I had 100 bucks and was sitting down looking for a mic and I had the option of, you know, again, one of these kind of you know, run-of-the-mill, bargain basement, guitar center, uh, condenser mics that's more likely than not being sold under a bunch of brands, um, you know, by a bunch of different names and in a bunch of different colors, but is the same exact mic with the same top-end response and all of this stuff. Between that and something that's really unique, you really kind of organic sounding, really different, I'm going to go for that every single time. And that is exactly what this mic is. I think it's such a cool option for budget conscious people who are looking for something that just sounds a little bit different, a little bit unexpected, and you can really use to give your recordings more character, more vibe, um, and just stand out from the pack a little bit. Now, I'm sure there's going to be guys, again, said at the beginning of the video and remains true, uh, I'm sure there's people who are going to jump in in the comments and say, oh, Octava 319, those things are terrible. They sound like crap, blah, 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 blah. And that's okay. You know, I understand not all mics are good at all things and not all mics are good for all people and all ears. Um, but for me personally, I just think it's really, really cool. And if there's any uh, fellow lovers of this mic out there, please jump into the comments down below as well. Let us know what you use these mics on. Um, we would love to hear from you guys. Um, there's also just a really cool kind of historical component to this mic, um, which is, you know, again, because Octava was originally... Uh, you know, founded under Soviet Russia, you can sometimes, the mics that you get when you order these, if you get them used, may have actually been manufactured when uh, they were still a Soviet um, communist country. And it's just kind of cool because we, you know, we did, obviously didn't trade with the Soviet Union in particular. So 30, 40 years ago, 20 years ago, when that mic was manufactured, you wouldn't have been able to get it here, period. Um, and it's just, you know, having something from behind the wall and the, you can see the the writing on the pad switch on the back is in, 
um, Cyrillic or in Russian. And, and that's really, I think that's really, really neat. It's just, it's a, just a different vibe altogether. Um, there are also definitely some guys who are modding these mics. Um, I believe Michael Jolie does a mod on the 319 and a number of other companies um, where they will do everything from just swap out a few electrical components to completely rebuilding using a different capsule. Um, and I've heard people have, have great success in really turning it into a, an incredibly detailed, high-end sounding condenser, which it definitively is not in its natural state. Um, so if you guys uh, enjoy having stuff modded or anything like that, they're a great option for that too. But even in their bare bone stock form, I just, I love it. I just think it's a, it's such an interesting mic with such an interesting sound and it brings a lot of character and vibe to my recordings. And I hope it does for you as well. If you ever have the opportunity to check one out, but again, let us know what you guys think of the comments down below. I'm sure I'm going to get some shade from people saying that this thing is total junk and that's okay. Everybody is entitled to their, their own opinion. Um, but I hope to find some of you out there who also love this mic and use it all the time. Um, but Either way, do let us know. We love hearing from you guys. Again, my name is Alex Scott with Concertini.com. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to our gear review, and we will see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.